Welcome to Intelli Version 22.6. In this video, I'm going to cover an extended example of updating character statistics using the display macro within Harlow 3.3. So let's review currently what we know. We know we can create passages, those are the smallest units within a story. We know we can create links, the connections between passages. And we also know we can use the display macro to display the contents of one passage in another. We also know when we work with the link and its sister macros, link, link repeat, link re rerun, we can create more interactivity in a single passage without causing a passage reload or navigating to a different passage. And this allows us, especially using link, link rerun, link repeat with the display macro to show a chain to a reader, such as updating statistics and other information as we create interactive stories. So in this example, let's create a pretty common situation. What we want to do is create a kind of character creation-like screen and allow a reader to take a certain number of points and assign them to corresponding statistics. So I've already created two passages to kind of get us started, and I'm going to walk through how the different concepts that I've now gone over can all interwork together. And across this video, we're going to get kind of complex and then simple again as we look through ways we can use display macro, particularly in combinations with other macros we have already seen. So let's start with start. So I've established four different statistics here. We have smarts, brawn, fight, and fleeing. And what I want to do in the create character passage is allow a reader to apply any particular points up to a pool of five to these corresponding statistics. Every time that happens, I want to subtract a value from the current pool of points, and I want to then increase the corresponding statistic by one. So let's go ahead and move over to create character and kind of look at what this might look like to start. So let's go ahead and create a pool of points. So I'm going to set points to five. Now, I'm using a temporary variable in this particular case because once the points are assigned, we don't really care about them anymore. We're not going to use them across the story. We're just going to use them in this particular passage. Okay, so let's start with smarts since that's the first statistic I created. And what I want to create is link, rerun, and I'm going to use a little plus symbol. And then within its hook, what I want to do is I want to say, okay, Every time a reader clicks this plus, I want a few different things to happen. First, I want to go ahead and decrease points by one, set points to it minus one. So I decrease the number of points in that pool by one. Then I want to set smarts, notice smarts is a story-wide variable, to it plus one. And then I want to show all of the current values of the current statistics so the reader knows what's going on. So let's go ahead and say smarts, smarts, then we have brawn, brawn, and then fight, fight, and of course, fleeing to fleeing. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what this is, or how this runs that is, and what it is, and then we'll kind of talk through ways we can immediately start using the display macro to improve what I've already done. So go over to build, let's go to play, create character, every time I click on plus, we're increasing smarts. Fantastic, right? All right, so I'm going to keep clicking on smarts, and as we notice, this number is 14. Smarts started at zero. The total point pool was five, and now I've clicked this 14 times. Well, it did what we wanted it to do in that it's showing us all the statistics and it's updating them in real time. As I click the plus, it updates and corresponding points is also being decreased, although we can't see it here. So that's good. So what are the issues? Well, first off, we've gone way over five, and so that's not good. We need to prevent that from happening. Two, we also don't know how many points we have. So let's fix the second thing and then we'll kind of talk through where we're at. So let's come back over here and say, okay, remaining points, points. Okay, so every time we click it, we'll also see how many points are remaining. So let's go ahead and rerun this again. Character, okay, remaining points, remaining points. Oops, now we're in the negative numbers. Okay, so that's not good. We're going to have to fix that issue. The other thing, though, is let's go ahead and create a second copy of this for Ron. 
just so we can see an issue that's going to immediately become apparent to us. So we've got brawn, and we can change smarts to brawn, and then everything else remains the same. Now notice kind of an interesting issue that's remaining. I have the same repeating lines right here, that's the same repeating lines right here. And in fact, every time I click on the plus next to a corresponding statistics in the create character passage, we're going to be seeing the same lines again and again. So if that is the case, that might be a great scenario to go ahead and put these lines into another passage and use the display macro. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut, for me, that is Control x If you are on Mac, that would be Command-X. I'm going to go ahead and go over to Passage, create a new passage. Let's call this Statistics. Oops. There it goes. And I will paste Control-V or Command-V. Uh, all right, let's come back to Create Character. And then we'll replace all of these lines with Display Statistics. Statistics. And, and I can copy and paste this, and on this time I'll do it with the mouse so you can see me doing it. And paste. Okay. So we reduced the total amount of code. We started a little more complex and then we moved a little more simple. Now there's something interesting going on here I want to pause and point out. We have a temporary Mac or a temporary variable that we're creating at the top of this passage. Let's get my order to correct here. Points. But then we have a temporary variable reference over here in a completely different passage. Now, what we know about temporary variables is they exist as long as passages exist. And this is an incredibly important concept as we consider temporary variables and the display macro in combination to each other. As long as we don't move to another passage, the temporary variable exists. So as long as we don't use passage navigation, we don't actually move to another passage, we can still use that variable. So let's look at this, because this is going to be kind of fascinating. Great character, smarts, brawn, and notice the points is correct. If I click it down here, if I click it up here, that's correct every time we see it. So that's very fascinating. So the temporary variable as far as it is aware, it is within the same passage because statistics is being shown in this current passage. Its context is being included in the current passage create character, despite the fact that it is referenced in statistics. So this can become important to us if we want to kind of separate this out. Now, let's go ahead and create two more to match the total statistics that we want. The third was fight. And the last was fling. So let's go ahead and adjust these correspondingly. Fling and fight. Okay, so now every time we click on a plus, we will correspondingly get the decrease of points and the adjustment of the corresponding statistics, smarts, brawn, fight, and fling, matching the initial statistics created over here in start. That's great. We will also see immediately the change to those statistics, so we're always keeping the reader updated about what is going on and how many points are remaining in the poll. But we run into another situation here in that we want to decrease the number of points, but we want to stop the decrease of points if they ever drop below zero. That is, there are five points within the pool, and once they're used up, they're used up, and we don't want to allow the reader to potentially decrease them even more. So let's go ahead and start with smarts, and what we want to say is say, hey, if points is greater than zero, do something, and the thing that we're going to do is decrease points by one. Okay, makes sense to me. And then we'll say, okay, well actually we need this every time we run this. So let's go ahead and replace this existing line every single time. And replace it every time we're using it. Now immediately we run into a new interesting problem. We've got the same lines repeating again and again and again in the same passage. In which case it might be a great candidate to move it to another passage and use the display macro. 
Now, let's think a little bit about how we're using the points. So we are decreasing them, and then we're currently showing the value of them. And we're doing that over here in statistics. So we've got remaining points over here. But what if we did everything that worked with points in the same passage? So potentially, we could move this somewhere else. So let's say, hey, actually, I'm going to remove this over here. So I'm using Control-X to cut, Command-X if you are on Mac. And then I'm going to say, hey, actually, every time, show the remaining points. Every time this is updated. So if points are greater than zero, decrease it by one. Fantastic. If it's not, then it doesn't really matter. Show the current points. But now we've run into, oh gosh, now we've run into an even stranger problem because we've got the points set up correctly where it will decrease down to zero and stop. But now there's an interesting problem going on because potentially we could reduce down to zero points, but the corresponding statistic would also increase. Gosh, now we've gotten to even more problem. Well, this might be the case to actually just add a separate variable. So let's come over here and add another variable. So I said, remember I said we're going to get complex and come back to simple again. So here's another kind of wave of this. So, okay. So what if we said stat update is set to zero. And I'm using something here called camel case right here. So stat update. So remember when we're establishing the names of variables, we are following rules that Harlow inherits from another programming language called JavaScript, which we don't really need to understand at this point other than it's inheriting certain rules. One of those rules is we can't have spaces within variables. And so anytime we're naming variables, there's a couple of different ways we could approach naming them. One of the more common ways to approach it is use something called camel case, which is kind of exactly as the word implies, kind of like a camel with a hump. And so we use a capital letter for each kind of additional word we add to a statistic. So in this case, stat update is set to zero. So when stat update is, this, is set to zero, we will say, okay, well, you can update the corresponding statistics. When it is equal to one, we're going to say you can't. So to kind of make this more explicit, let's say, okay, what I want this to be set to is say stat, up. Oh, oop, sorry, let's write the stat update to one and say, okay, well, Let's come down here and say, gosh, if stat update is one, I'm sorry, let's reverse this. Stat update is zero. Got myself confused there. Then we are allowed to change it. Okay. Well, gosh. Trying to fix all of these things and replicating this multiple times would just get incredibly confusing. So what if we just made this a lot simpler on ourselves? What if we said, as I started to say earlier, everything having to do with points and kind of related to that is just in its own passage. So let's cut all of this right here. So control X for me on my keyboard, command X for you if you are on Mac, and let's just create a new passage. And this is just gonna say adjust points. And the entire purpose of this is going to check, hey, if points is greater than zero, we decrease points. And if set update is equal to one, we, or else we set set update to one. And so in which case we can't increase. And then we said, okay, the remaining points, we just show it. So adjust points. Okay, let's come back over here. And we say display, adjust points. And cool. Okay, well, we've just made things a lot easier in ourselves. Now, every time we come into here, we go ahead and check it. And because we're using temporary variables, here's that trick again, that display macro will use it because we're still in the same passage. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this for me, control C. And let's come down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take out these lines. Sorry, I get my cursor in the correct place, set it here. 
And then let's go ahead and copy and paste this. And then put closing hook right there. Okay. Uh, yep, got that mixed up, sorry. Here, and then we'll put this at the end outside. Close and clean up a little bit. And then let's just temporarily take all of this out so I don't confuse myself on accident. And we'll go ahead and copy and paste uh, this whole thing inside that hook and just change it to fight. And do the same thing for fling. And now just change this to fling. Okay. So in our new code, we're now using the display macro twice. The first time is checking the kind of adjusting of points for us, if we can do it or not. And the second time, it's returning back and showing us the current value of statistics. Well, we've got a little bit of a new problem, which is to say we are checking stat update every single time. So what we're going to need to do is at the end of every kind of internal hook, we're going to have to reset stat update. But as you can already see, we'd actually have to do that a bunch of different times. So let's be very clever about this and say, oh, actually, what if we put it over here? Oops. Control V. And set reset stat update to zero. Now we're being very clever about this, and we're using the fact that temporary variables exist across the same passage, and the display macro is still including the same passage. So now we have two different temporary variables, but we're using display macro twice. So in this case right here, we can click plus. We will jump over to adjust points. If we can adjust points, we will go ahead and create this by one. And then finally, inside this same hook will be statistics we'll to show the current statistics and we'll reset stat update. So then if we check it again with link rerun, it will still be the same thing every single time. So let's kind of see this run, and then we'll talk about there's one remaining issue we want to fix here. Great. So plus, we've got remaining points for, okay, let's jump down here to fling. Scroll down a little bit. We've got remaining points three, smarts one, fleeing one. Let's go ahead and dump them all. Ah, notice that. Okay. So notice we've got them all into fling. We've got no remaining points, so that's working exactly as intended, and that's fantastic. However, we've got this new weird problem. where We've got lots and lots of what we call white space in this output, and that's not good. So let's fix this. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of all that white space. But what's generating the white space? Well, the white space is being generated by the lines that have macros. So let's go ahead and fix that. So in Harlow, we can use open and closing curly brackets or braces, depending on where you live in the world to collapse that white space, which is to say, don't output the spaces that the macros were on. So we're gonna use it in adjust points, and then we're gonna come over here to create character, and we're gonna use it again. And I'm gonna put it right here, and then I'm gonna put it right here. And then we're going to repeat this pattern. Now this can seem a little bit odd. Why would I put it why wouldn't I just put it over this entire thing? Well, the reason why I don't want to do that is because then it would affect statistics, which I don't want it to affect. I just want it to affect these corresponding lines. And adjust points has its own. Now, again, potentially you might consider, well, if we just put the curly brackets or the braces around the use of display macro, it should work. The problem with that is that the curly braces, the collapsing white space, happens on a per passage basis. So something a little bit weird about using this again, kind of understanding all these rules and connections to each other. So if we used it around adjust points, it wouldn't affect adjust points. It would just affect the macro line by itself, which is a little bit confusing. So in this case, we put the collapsing white space within adjust points to affect that single passage. And now we will correspondingly put it around everything, but we're using statistics because we don't want this to be reduced to 
the, a single line. We want these extra lines here so we can see it on a per line basis. Okay. So if I've now done everything correctly, we should finally have great character, smarts, brawn, fight, fling. We've got a little extra space, but that's not too bad. And potentially we could rearrange our collapsing. We could put our points in and notice by clicking it, it doesn't do anything. By clicking it, it readjusts these, but doesn't allow new points. And it readjusts these, but doesn't allow new points. And everything should be here, 2111, 211, 211. And let's go ahead and adjust this, 2111. Okay. So we can see that using temporary variables, something we've not covered, I've not covered in any videos up to this point in any depth, that we can combine them with the knowledge we already have a display macro, and we can create a kind of character creation screen where they have a pool of five points. Every time they click a link, we are adjusting points, we're adjusting corresponding statistics, and we're also always showing the reader the current adjustments of the corresponding statistics, so they always have that knowledge. So this is a complicated video for a complicated topic, but as we can see, it's really not too complicated if we kind of break down the existing concepts we are the concepts we already understand, things like collapsing white space, things like using display macro, and a little bit of tricky things around using temporary variables in the same passage by working with the display macro to kind of combine all of this existing knowledge, the set macro, the if macro, the display macro, and collapsing white space. Thanks for watching.